everyone and welcome to another weekly progress log. I'm very excited to share this one with you, especially compared to the last one because I had a lot more fun filming this. It was actually filmed over eight or nine days, so it's a lot more cohesive than the last video, and I accomplished way more. I managed to finish two projects, I began work on a Edwardian project, and I made some more progress in my 1880s project. I also made a couple headpieces too. Not quite everything I wanted to accomplish, but still significantly more than I got done in the last video. And I'm actually kind of proud of what I got done, and that's a really nice feeling. This is the first week in a long time where I've looked back at what I've done, and I've actually been happy and excited about it. So I hope that shows in this video and that you enjoy it too. Just a note before I get started is that I'm not doing wrap-ups at the end of these videos. Instead, I'm going to be listing what I accomplished in the description box along with any relevant links. So check that out if you want a better idea of what I'm going to be doing in this video or at the end if you're just curious to see it all laid out. And with that said, I'm going to get started. Thank you so much for watching, and I really hope you enjoy! Hello everyone! So today I'm sort of bummed. It's November 9th, so it's the day after the presidential election, and spirits are not high in my household. And I don't feel that much like working, but I know I will feel better if I'm working instead of just moping around all day. At least I will be moping and being productive, which is good. But anyway, if you saw my last video, then you'll have already seen this project. It's a Turk from the late 1700s. As you can see, the bodice is almost completely assembled. It has closures at the front. The shoulder seams are done up. The interior isn't that pretty, but I'm actually going to leave it like this. I kind of like how it's a little bit ragged. To me, it reminds me of the interiors of garments from this period. A lot of times they weren't as perfectly finished as the garments we make today are. So I kind of like this and I just feel like leaving it like this. And now it's time to sew the sleeves on and the sleeves are over here. I talked a lot about constructing these in my last vlog as well, so if you're interested in any of that, it will be linked down below. I'm going to sew these on by hand, but first I'm going to pin them in place and then do a quick little fitting just to make sure they're pinned in properly because I don't want to sew them in and then have to rip them off and repeat the process. Over here is the skirt that will go with this project, and there is going to be an overskirt that hangs down from the Turk and covers the back half of this project. I've already cut out and trimmed and assembled that piece. I just have to gather or pleat down the top edge and then sew it on. Hopefully I can get that done after sewing on the sleeves. So the bodice is finished and I'll show it to you in a minute. It took me probably an hour or two to get those sleeves on. It wasn't even sewing them on that was time consuming. It was just trying to get them to fit properly and I ended up having to adjust the shoulder seam. And it took a long time. But it's done and I tried it on and it seemed to fit well, which I'm very happy about. So this is going to be the overskirt for the Turk and I'm just going to go ahead and gather down the top edge so it can be sewn onto the bodice. And I just did a check with this roughly pinned over top of the petticoat and I was not happy with it. The train is a lot longer than I remembered, but since I've done so much detailing on the edges, I can't really make the hem shorter, so hopefully it will look better when it's gathered and onto the bodice. See what I mean about the train being too long? But unfortunately there isn't much I can do about it now. I did gather down the top edge and I'm pretty happy with the shape of it, even though I wish the train was a foot shorter. And I think that's going to be it for me today. I'm going to go downstairs and eat lunch and do some editing on a video. And we'll see if I get up to anything later tonight. I don't know, I'm sort of feeling bummed about today as I said earlier, so I may just mope and eat chocolate and watch episodes of Game Grumps. I don't think I actually showed this to you yesterday, but this is the finished bodice. I really like it. I love all the textures and the beadwork and how the fabrics work together. I wasn't really sure about these fabrics when I originally picked them, so seeing them come together so nicely is really encouraging and makes me really happy. So now I just have to sew the overskirt onto this and do a fitting and I think then I will be done. But before working on the skirt, I want to show you what I picked up yesterday. My whole plan of distracting myself with sewing didn't really work, and I ended up distracting myself with shopping and getting a few things from Joann's and Michael's uh, since I wanted to pick up things for my Christmas project, and I ended up getting some other stuff along the way. Okay, so first I'm going to show you what I got at Michael's, and I'm really excited about everything. They had such a fantastic selection of Christmas stuff. I probably could have spent, like, I'm not even kidding, $500 just on glittery Christmassy decorations because I loved everything. But I limited myself and I think I ended up spending 20 bucks because everything was 50% off and then I had a 25% off entire purchase coupon. So the first thing I got were these little branches. They're white and then they're covered with iridescent glitter. And they have little iridescent flecks that shine green and pink when the light catches them. 
Then I got two of these, and these were a bit more expensive. I think they ended up being like $1.20 each, but I really liked these. They're black plastic branches, but they're completely covered with glitter, and they're silver glitter, but there's also purple and green and iridescent glitter. And I think I'm going to use those to make a headpiece to go with this peacock. They had this at the end of the Christmas aisle, and I just couldn't resist it. I don't know if you're really seeing it from the best angle, but it has sparkles on the feathers, and then its body is all sparkly. It's just really cute. I got one of these floral sprigs that are just leaves that are both green and glittery green and then has little glittery fake berries on it and this one is in the silvery blue color scheme. I also got four that are in the gold color scheme that have the same colors of leaves and I got one bush of these really pretty miniature velvet poinsettias. The final thing I got were antlers. I remember a while ago antlers were really popular in headpieces and I saw them everywhere and they were always really expensive since people had to hand mold or make these antlers and then paint them to look realistic. So these are plastic and they were originally 17 bucks, but they were 50% off and then 25% off of that. So they didn't end up being too expensive. So I got one piece of them and I figured I would turn this into a headpiece of some sort. From Joann's I ended up getting 8 yards of this really bright plaid fabric. And then I got 6 yards of this subtle checked print black and brown fabric. And both of these are from the Platitude Flash Faux Wool Flannel Collection that I really like. And then I also got this really pretty specked tool, which is really soft. I was originally going to use this for an 18th century project, but I think I'm going to use it for my Christmas project instead, since I think I'm going down a gold route with the 18th century project. And then I also picked up a few yards of cotton broadcloth, which I'm going to use to make a big set of panniers for the previously mentioned 18th century project. And finally I got two sets of hooks and eyes since I was running low. So I just finished sewing the skirt on with small whip stitches and then I tried the bodice on. I didn't try it on over stays but I actually really like how it fits without stays so I think I might just wear it that way. Since it is supposed to be from a slightly later period, stays weren't worn quite as often so I feel like I can kind of get away with it but we'll see if I change my mind later on. I do need to try it on over the petticoats at some point just to make sure it still fits nicely and lays properly that way, but I'm feeling pretty good about it. So the final thing I have to do on this project is make a little bow that will cover this little flap I had to add to make the bust a little bit bigger. And I think I'm just going to make that out of this fabric and then burn the edges to finish them with it. So I made the little bow and got it sewn on and I incorporated pearls into it since pearls are going to be a big part of the headpiece and I wanted to tie them into the dress too. And now this dress is done, um, so all I have left to do is making the headpiece, and then I need to alter one of my petticoats to fit better underneath this project, and eventually I'll probably make a little chemise too, which will make the neckline a little bit more modest, and I'll use a tool or a gauze for that, as well as some sparkly netting to give it a little bit of interest. So that's the plan, and I'm really happy with this, and I'm excited to try and figure out how to make the headpiece. It's going to be a turban style sort of headband, that also incorporates feathers and beads, so it'll be a challenge since I've never done anything like it before, but that's what's going to make it fun. So this is my inspiration picture. This was painted about 150 years before the dress I'm making was supposed to exist, but I love the headpiece so much, and similar things were worn in the late 1700s, so I'm just going to go with it and use this as my main reference. To accomplish something similar, I went ahead and made a base. Then I'm going to sew the fabric and beads too. And then I made two fabric tubes and I'm going to fill these tubes with quilt batting and then twist them together. And I'm going to try and incorporate some glitter tool and then once it's all done I'm going to add some beads and make it really spectacular. I'm just hoping that I can get the shape I want right without too much fuss. So here's my beautiful headpiece in progress. I got the twisted portion sewn onto the base and looking back now I wish I'd put some boning in the base so it wouldn't kind of twist just from the way the fabric is done. So that's something to keep in mind if I ever make something like this again. I just tried this on and I really like the shape and thickness of it so I'm happy with that. However, I don't think my original plan of embellishing it is a good one. I think I should just let the fabric speak for themselves rather than piling other things on top of it. So I think what I'm going to do is finish the ends. Then I'm going to attach elastic to each end so it will form a ringlet and have some stretch to it so I can get it on and off my head. And if that goes well, then I can go ahead and attach flowers and feathers to it. It's and it finished! I'm really pretty happy with how it turned out, but I used so much hot glue and more feathers than I intended to get this result. It ended up looking a little bit more feathery than I wanted at first, so there was quite a bit of trimming and then gluing them down so they were 
sticking out less, but I really like the end result. And now I have to clean up this mess. To be honest, I'm so tempted to make Christmas headpieces now. I'm just looking at this box of glittery stuff and I want to turn it into glittery headpieces. And I seriously got enough stuff for like five Christmas headpieces, which I think is more than anyone really needs to see, but I want to make them so badly. But anyway, with this done, the costume is complete. And I'm so excited to wear it and get photos of it. Hello everyone, so it's a new morning and with the Turk finished, I wasn't really sure what to work on today. I have a little bit of work I could do on the blue striped 18th century project, but I'm in the process of gathering organza ruffles for it, and I think I should finish that before moving forward. So I needed something else to work on, and I finally realized that I could work on the 1880s project. This is the skirt panel which I showed in my last progress vlog. And I'm going to add a ruffle and some lace to the hemline. So I've just been gathering these pieces of lace down in the centers so they form arcs instead of sitting straight. And then I'm pinning them on so they look like this. And then there's going to be a ruffle made out of a brown fabric or taffeta underneath them. And I just think this looks a little bit more interesting than having the lace run straight all the way along. So this is where I'm at now. I've made quite a bit of progress and I like how it looks, but I'm not really sure how to move forward. I think I need to get it put on my dress form, which means taking the 18th century project off my dress form, but I don't want to do that because I'm going to have to put it all back on the dress form when I'm fitting the blue and white striped dress. I might just take a little break and then come back to this and move forward with something because I definitely have to get more done today. I'm quite angry with myself because I haven't filmed anything in the last two days and I've actually accomplished quite a lot in that time frame. So I really wish I had just picked up my camera and shown you all the steps, but I was so focused on getting things done that I just didn't think to do it. But I'll show you what I got done now and what I'm planning on doing today. I went ahead and sewed the darts for the front panel of the 1880 skirt. I also made one of the back panels which will be sewn onto the front panel um, and this is pretty much completely finished. I just have to sew it on. So that's going to be my first task for today and I'd like to get the waistband on this today as well and then I can start draping the portions that go over top of it because this skirt has a lot of layers and I have to complete the base which is this layer before moving on to any of the things that go on top of it. I sewed so. it together and now I'm going to try putting it on my dress form and hopefully it'll fit and it will have the shape I want it to otherwise there's going to be some altering required. So this is how it looks on the dress form and I'm actually really pretty happy with it. I like the shape. I'm not a huge fan of this like bunching at the bottom and I think that's because I actually padded that portion with quilt batting so it's causing it to puff out but I think that portion is going to be covered and it might even help the train stick out nicely. So I'm not going to do anything about it now. If it's still bothering me further down the line, then I can cut the batting out of it without messing up any of the stitching. I think I'm going to try draping the little puffs that will go here. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to move on to draping an Edwardian project, which I think I mentioned at the beginning of my last video. So I kind of like the shape of this. It was actually a lot harder to get a shape I liked than I was expecting but they're too long. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the hem and then I will sew the hem with the right sides facing each other and when it's turned the right way out there will be a clean arched edge right there that I can then sew lace onto. The 1880s skirt isn't going well. I just can't get it to look the way I want it to look. Usually in that situation I try and push forward because if I don't get it done then I'm just going to procrastinate on it since I know it's difficult. But in this case I really think I need a break from it and revisit it when I'm not frustrated and can attempt a different method. So that's what I'm going to do and in the meantime I'm working on the 18th century sleeves. And I got the ruffles gathered and sewn onto these and I just did a little test and they seem to fit really nicely. So I'm going to sew up the side seam and then I'm going to sew the side seam for the lining and then I'm going to sew the lining in by hand and then I can get them onto the bodice. So the sleeves are done. I sewed the lining in around the cuff and then I basted it to the top edge and now I'm going to sew the sleeves onto the bodice. And I don't know if I've shown you the bodice in this video but this is what it looks like. And last night I got the ruffle sewn around the neckline and I love how the ruffle looks on this. I think it's so cute. So now all I have to do is attach the sleeves, then cover the raw edge of the top of the sleeve and the arm opening, and add two hooks and bars to keep it closed underneath the ruffle. The rest already has hooks in it, but I didn't do that part since I wanted to sew the ruffle on first. The sleeves are on, and I just did a quick little fitting, and I'm really happy with it. The sleeves are tight enough to look nice, but I also have a lot of mobility when it's worn, which I love because my last 18th century project I could barely lift my arms in. 
So this is definitely an improvement and now I'm really excited to get this finished. So with the sleeves on I can go ahead and finish up the arm openings so the raw edges are hidden and that's what I'm going to do now. I just finished sewing in the final few hooks and bars and I also finished covering the raw edges of the sleeves. So the bodice is done! Now I just have to finish the skirt overlay and then get that sewn onto the bodice. I've actually made some progress on that as well. I got it hemmed so now I just need to finish ruffling enough organza trim for it and then get that sewn on. So hopefully I can do that tonight. But for now I'm going to go downstairs and have some lunch and hopefully I will be back up here in an hour or two and then I can get to work on draping the Edwardian project. So last night I drafted the pattern for the Edwardian project. I draped one half of it and then I transferred it to paper and added seam allowances and this is what I've ended up with. I'm going to be brave also known as stupid, and not make a mock-up because I'm fairly confident that it'll fit and all the seam allowances are one inch which means I can let it out quite significantly if it ends up being too small. I'm also going to assemble the lining first and then cut out and sew together my overlay. So if something's really wrong then you probably won't even be able to tell since I can make those adjustments before piecing together the overlay. My one concern is that I don't have enough fabric to cut this out. I think I have three yards of the fabric I want to use as lining and I have four yards of the overlay fabric. So I definitely have enough for the overlay but I'm feeling less confident about the lining so keep your fingers crossed for me. So I got everything cut out from the satin which is going to be the base layer except for the sleeves which I haven't drafted yet. And to be honest, I don't think I have enough fabric left to cut out the sleeves when I do get them drafted, but I'm gonna try and make it work. So far I've gotten all the skirt panels sewn together and now I'm going to add horsehair to the hem and gather the top edge. I also got the darts sewn into the bodice and the side seams done up, so that's coming along pretty nicely as well. Here are the bodice panels and over here I have the bodice panels cut out from the overlay with the darts marked and pinned. But I have to change the thread color in my machine before working on this, so I'm going to try and get everything done with this fabric finished first. The overlay is made out of a green satin face chiffon, and I'm in love with the color and sheen of this fabric, but it's kind of a pain to work with, so I'm procrastinating when it comes to cutting out the skirt panels. So I will try and get it done today. Well, the base layer is pretty much finished except for the back seam. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these skirt panels out from the satin face chiffon and also sew the darts into the bodice. So I finished sewing the bodice together and the darts and everything and I'm pretty happy with how it looks. The darts are slightly uneven but since the appliques cover the tops of them and a waistband will cover the bottom of them I don't think it's going to be too noticeable and this fabric is so delicate that I really can't rip them out and redo them. Uh, speaking of appliques, I've just roughly pinned them on. I think they're going to look a little bit better after I've outlined them with sequins and added some lace to the neckline. Uh, but I like the placement of them and I think they really complement the shape of this. So with that said, I'm going to go downstairs and do some editing and walk Gwen and shower. And then I will resume progress on this tonight and get the skirt cut out and hopefully get it assembled too. Hello everyone. So it's another day and last night I actually accomplished quite a bit. I got the overlay for the skirt cut out and I sewed the darts and the side seams. So now I just have to gather the back and hem it, which I should be able to accomplish today. Over here I have the 18th century project and as you can see I have one of the ruffles mostly done for the skirt. I've actually gathered one edge of all the ruffles that are going to go on the skirt, but the ruffles have to be sewn on before the other edge can be gathered. So that's what I'm doing over here. This long edge has been gathered and sewn on, and then I'm in the process of doing the same with this one. I have been working on this downstairs, but it's getting large enough that it's difficult to work on on my lap. So I wanted to try and finish this side this morning and potentially make some progress on the other side too. So I got one side gathered and pinned in place and it went much faster than I was expecting. It's a lot easier to do this on a large flat surface rather than on my lap or the <laughs> whiteboard that I usually sew on when I'm downstairs. So I think I'm going to try and get the other side pinned on and gathered as well. I just wanted to go ahead and talk a little bit more about these ruffles because when I was watching the video that went up before this, I realized that I didn't really go into details about them. Here are some in their more natural form. These are strips of organza that I cut out with pinky shears and I cut out two different sizes of them so the ones on the bodice neckline are 
smaller and these ones are a little bit wider. After cutting out the strips, I sewed them together and then I went across each edge with the flame of a candle to melt them slightly. And then I gathered down each edge by hand. And as you can see, I only gathered one edge down at first, then I pinned it onto the project, sewed it down, and then gathered the other edge and pinned it in place. And I used this process on the sleeves, on the bodice neckline, and of course on the skirt. It's been quite time consuming since it's a lot of gathering by hand and I've been using very small stitches but I'm so happy with how it looks. I think it's really striking and interesting looking and I love how the sheen of this organza and the opaque stripes on it really complement the sheen of the taffeta. So I'm very happy with how this process looks and I've really enjoyed the process of making them. I'm just excited for it to be done with since it has been a long process and moving on to something else will be even more fun. And on that note, I also want to show you my sewing surface for when I'm downstairs. Whenever I say I'm going to be sewing downstairs, this is what I sew on. It's a whiteboard, and I'd say it's 2 feet by 18 inches, 2 feet by 20 inches, something like that. And it has a binder clips up top, so if I'm working on something that requires tension to be on it, I can just clip it up there and then pull on it while I work. I usually take down a little tray of some sort, and then my pins are on a magnetized little holder, I have a pair of scissors, and I have whatever thread I'm working with, and then of course whatever project, and usually a little tray off to the side filled with beads, since when I'm sewing downstairs, I'm usually beading. But I find that this surface is big enough for me to do a lot of the detail work. Um, it's really convenient because things stay clean and they stay relatively flat if they're small. And I really like the size of this too because it balances perfectly on the armrests of the chair I sit in. So it just works out really nicely. And I thought you guys might be curious since I say I'm going to be downstairs sewing quite a lot. This is the reality of that. And now I'm going to go ahead and get back to work and I'll update you when I have more to share. And I got the other side gathered and pinned in place, so now it's time to move on to the Edwardian project. I'm going to level the hem and then turn it inward with a basting stitch and turn it inward once again with tiny whip stitches. And I'm going to do that by hand even though I think the hem may end up being covered by lace trim. This fabric is just so prone to catching that I think it's going to look a lot smoother overall if I do it by hand. I finished hemming and now it's time to sew the bodice onto the skirt. And if that goes well then I can sew it to the lining and I'm going to do that by sewing around the neckline with the right sides facing each other and that will be it. It's so annoying. This dress is the prettiest emerald green in person and it looks blue on camera and it drives me crazy. But I got the waist seam done up and I'm pretty happy with how it looks so now I'm going to pin it to the neckline of the lining and sew them together and hopefully that will go well and it'll look nice once I'm finished. And I'm done. I think I'm going to have to hem the lining to be a little bit shorter since the bit's peeking out and I'm not thrilled with how the waistline looks. It dips down a little bit but I think that's going to be fine since there will be a waistband covering it. It's just not ideal. So last night I got around to sewing on the ruffles to both sides of the skirt and now it's time to gather down the top edge so it'll fit on the bodice. I shouldn't need to, but I'm going to use some heavy duty thread for gathering the skirt down. This way there's no chance of it breaking as I'm sewing and forcing me to start over. So the gathering is done, and now I'm going to go ahead and pin it onto the bodice and try it on, and if it lays the way I want it to, then I'm going to sew it on as well. So I just finished sewing on the skirt, and I tacked the edge down to the interior so it'll be less prone to fraying, but I didn't finish it with lace or bias tape since I didn't want to add any additional bulk to the waistline. Here you can see it from the exterior. There's a bit of puckering, but that won't be visible once it's worn and there's tension put on it. I'm pretty happy with it. The one thing I'm actually disappointed with is that there's a mark on the fabric. I don't know if you can see it's on the white stripe. Oh, I must have had something on my desk that caused that, and I'll try and get it out with soap, but that's really frustrating. Other than that, I really like this costume. I like how it fits, and I love the materials I used. I love how soft the blue and white look together, yet it's cut in a very angular, sharp way, and I think that's really interesting. And I think the organza ruffles complement it really nicely. I'm super happy with how they turned out, and this costume just in general. Now, I don't think I will have worn photos to share by the time this video goes up. I'm not even sure if I'll have the blog post about this project up, but I'll link whatever relevant information I have in the description box. I'd like to photograph it soon, but I do have to make a matching hat, and I have to alter the petticoat that goes underneath it. 
So we'll just have to wait and see. Now I'm going to work on a pattern I drafted last night, or rather draped last night. This is for the cloak I'm going to pair with my Christmas costume, and it's kind of a weird design. I'm not fully confident that it will work. Uh, I'm going to transfer this onto paper and add seam allowances, and then I'm going to go downstairs and get some lunch and take this girly for a walk. So I finished transferring the pattern onto paper and I'm as happy as I can be with it considering I haven't made a mock above it and don't know if it's going to work. And now I'm gonna go downstairs. It's still relatively early in the day, but I have a lot to do today. I have a video I wanna edit. I have a couple voiceovers I wanna write. I have a blog post I have to write. And I'd also like to write a whole bunch of reviews for the books in front of me. I want to do a book review blog post before Christmas. I was hoping to write one or two a day and then just have it finished over a period of a week or two, but I've been slacking hardcore and I haven't written any. So I'm going to try and write uh, reviews for all the pattern books today, which is this stack. And I think I'm actually going to end this video here because I've completed two projects in this video. And I feel like I need to save something exciting for the next couple. So I'm going to end it here. I accomplished quite a lot in this video. I made a headpiece for my 18th century project and I finished my 18th century Turk. And I finished the blue and white striped dress and underskirt which I'm very happy with. I began work on an Edwardian project which is coming along pretty well. And I made some progress on my 1880s dress. So though there's still a lot to do with two of those projects and I still have a hat to make to go with one of the 18th century ones, I'm feeling good about how the last week and a half or two weeks have gone and I'm excited to see what the next one will bring. And if you're excited to see what the next one will bring, then definitely stay tuned because I will have a video up next week showing what I got up to. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you all very soon.